it's Roy Kelly for Seconds Out. Happy to be joined by Matram CEO Frank Smith, swapping Monte Carlo for the glitz and glamour of Newcastle this weekend. Welcome to the town. Perhaps not a warm welcome, it's a bit chilly outside, but welcome to Newcastle. It's actually quite nice, mate. I'm wearing a short sleeve shirt. I felt all right outside. It was about 10 degrees. That's good enough for me. It was, uh, it was a bit sunshine as well, but it's great to be here. Oh, good stuff, good stuff. Um, perhaps if you're looking at the card on paper, not Matram's finest hour, but why why should people tune in or pay on the door on, on Saturday night? Look, I think it's a great next-gen show, showing talent of tomorrow and building them through. You know, from the top of the bill, you've got Shabazz Masood, who's a brilliant fighter. Obviously, he was supposed to be Pat McCormack. Um, unfortunately, had to pull out injured, but Shabazz Masood, not far off from challenging for a world title. He goes in there against Jose San Martin, who's a Gonzalez, 25-1, and one, though. You know, I think this is a tough fight for Shabazz. Um, on the card, though, as well, you've got Mark Dickinson's back out against Grant Dennis. Look, we saw there's a bit of spite there between the two of them. Grant Dennis has got the experience and Mark Dickinson, obviously, standout amateur that we believe has got huge potential in the pro ranks. Cameron Vong, you know, a brilliant fighter who we feel has, you know, a massive future here in Newcastle. We've obviously had some tremendous nights here over the years with Lewis Ritz and some of the best atmospheres we've ever seen. He sold close to 600 tickets for Saturday, you know, and that just shows the path he's going to be on. And he's going to move quickly as well. Uh, Callum French back out. Jeff Afari fights a tough fight, especially after six months out the ring for Callum French. Um, you know, so excited for that. Ishmael against Ewan is another brilliant fight. We saw the back and forth between those two, you know, 8 0, 11 0. And I think that's that fight's really going to set the winner up for a massive future off the back of this platform. Owen and Ben Reese on the card. Jimmy Sainz, another amateur fighter we're very excited about. Had his debut back in September. Back out quickly again now. So, no, I think it's a stellar card, top to bottom. I think you've got spite there. I think, you know, you're going to build up some, a real storyline between some of these. And, you know, I think we're in for a good, good night's of entertainment. Yeah, and with, with, with Shabazz as well, it's his first fight for Matrim and Dazorn. You must be excited to see how he goes. Yeah, 100%. You know, Shabazz, is, uh, we signed him, I think, five or five months or so ago now. Obviously, unfortunate what happened in Liverpool, but the focus for us was to get him back out as soon as possible. And, you know, th this opportunity presented itself. So, you know, he wants to move quickly as well. You know, with so long out of the ring, he could have, you know, people could have said have an eight-round comeback fight. Wouldn't have done anything for him at his stage of, the career, of his career. He needs these types of tests and uh, looking forward to it. Yeah, given you did lose two very good top-of-the-bill fights for the show, how important was it to keep, give the lads who were on the undercard their, their, their head on, on Saturday? Yeah, 100%. Like I say, we sold massive, they've sold massive tickets. Um, and Newcastle's a market where we've got you know huge potential that we've seen and built before and we see be, being able to build again for the future. You know, there was talk up there about St James's Park in the future. I had to check they were in the Premiership because I'm not a big football fan. So apologies for that. But there's, uh, there's massive potential to build something like huge uh, here and you know you re really get behind the fighters and it, it's great to see is it a case about possibly a quick return when when pat mccormack's fit maybe cyrus pattinson as well yeah i think so look the cyrus pattinson connor walker rematch a great fight you know we could see that early part next year let's see just moving up the division of six to the heavyweights um anthony joshua we've just seen him on tv with louis Theroux. fascinating documentary on him when can we see him in his work clobber again uh, we're working on it now. Look, there's been a lot of talk. Obviously, we were working on getting him out in December. There was some delay around the potential of Fury Usyk going December 23rd. With that not happening, we could maybe, you know, we were looking at opportunities still uh, or January. So, but we got to move very quickly. We got to move quickly. The key for us is keeping him active. You know, he's had a bit nice busy year, 14 April and August, something he hasn't done in a long time. So to get him out again in the next couple of months would be great to see. Any word on possible opposition for, for AJ? Not yet. I'm not going to say it because I say it and then people get annoyed when you don't. So uh, we got ourselves in that position. We're, we're working through opportunities now and I think it'll be a decent fight. Yeah. On the subject of the heavy still, the Tyson Fury, obviously a very, very tough fight from last time out. Mm -hmm. What do you make of Frank Warren's comments? He's, he's been deriding people who are saying that maybe Tyson should retire. What, what are your views on that? No, look, I think not every night in the sport is going to be, it's high level sport, not every night is going to be your best night. Yeah. Um, and I think Tyson, you know, he didn't, he didn't have his best night. But I think it's exciting, it's exciting for the sport because you get to see great heavyweight fights and they can all fight each other and the reality is they can all beat each other on their best night. 
assuming we do see uh, Fury music on in February, I think there's been the talk. How would you see that going? Uh, a, a win for the fight fans. You know, it's been a long time coming to see an undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. So whatever way it goes, whoever wins, uh, it's going to be great for the sport. And on the subject of, of huge fights, the, probably a, a British fight doesn't come any bigger than Conor Ben and Chris Eubank Jr. Where are we with that at the moment? Working hard, working hard. <laughs> Hopefully new soon. You know, we're putting a lot of hours into it. It's the biggest fight out there for both of them. Um, it's probably one of the biggest fights in British boxing that can be made. And, uh, you know, I'm hopeful we can get it over the line. Yeah. Uh, Chris Eubank Sr., who I think you have a relatively close relationship with, uh, described, I think, the fight as shameful. Uh, what are your views on, or have you spoken to Chris Sr. about that and talked it through? No, no, no. Look, he's obviously look at, uh, working with Harlem Eubank now, um, and you know maybe that's a fight in the future for sure. Uh, but no, I haven't, I haven't spoken to him about it. Um, uh, I haven't really seen the comments either, to be honest. Fair enough. Um, and lastly, uh, Dimitri Bivol, as there's talk maybe of a return for him. Will we see him in Vegas and at some point in the future? Possibly, possibly. We're working through a couple of, we've got a couple of options on the table for Dimitri. He's a special fighter. He's pound for pound one of the top fighters in the world right now. And the focus for us is to get him back out, get active, and obviously get the winner of the, the smith Peterbia fight, which happens on January 13th. So news soon on Dimitri Bivol, but looking forward to seeing him back in the ring because he's a great fighter. And just last one, match room for the rest of 2023. How is it looking? Busy, busy. Look, we got you know a tremendous run. Obviously, kick, well, kicked off a few weeks back. I think we've done 14 shows in 15 weeks, basically. Um, next gen this weekend. Then we go to LA for Diego Pacheco, a special fighter who we think is going to rule. You know, for for many years to come. Just 22, 23 years old. Uh, then we go to back to Dublin. Chantel Cameron defends her world titles against Casey Taylor. The first one was a brilliant fight, and I think we're in for another brilliant night in Dublin. December 2nd, Michael Conlon, Jordan Gill with a stacked undercard there as well. Can't wait for that one. December 9th, we're in San Francisco for the special fight between Devon Haney and Regis Progre. And that's really going to set the winner up for a you know massive 2024 in the 140-pound division. December 16th, I think one of the best fights of the year in boxing. Sonny Edwards, Jesse Rodriguez, um, and all with stacked undercards as well. So an exciting end to the year. Maybe we see something December 23rd too. Let's see. Many thanks for your time, Frank, and all the best for Saturday. Cheers, mate. Good to see you.